Hey guys, to help run the forums, host the website, and travel, we've introduced a universal service fee for in-depth coverage, including this video. My goal is to be unbiased and transparent. It's a privilege to serve you. This is not an endorsement. Let's get into it. Hey guys, it's a beautiful day in Seattle. We've got an awesome view of the city and I'm hanging out with Arda Arnal. He's the founder of Aerial Rider. Hey. Hanging out over here. I love it, you match the bike. Yeah, I totally flamed. <laughs> <laughs> Very stylish. This thing was introduced around 2011, 2012 when you guys yeah. started the company, right? Correct, yeah. This yeah. is the first bike from them. I have reviewed it before, but they have really dialed things in. This is the third generation, so plenty of time to kind of you know, just tighten these bikes up. They're pretty complex, and that was early days for electric bikes in America, at it least. It was, yeah, definitely. Was, yeah. yeah. So you so, guys have been around, right? And this was, it's kind of like a vintage look to it with the brown tires, the plush comfort saddle, the brown grips, that plastic box in the middle. That's actually where the battery is, is contained, and you'll know that it tapers. It's a little bit wider up here in the front, just like a gas tank, narrower back here so you don't bump your knees while you're pedaling it keeps the weight fairly centered on the bike rather than having like some extra clunky pack or something behind the seat they have another model that's the w class yeah correct. which does have that that sort of seat to battery so i'm not trying to bash on that i'm just saying there is something really nice aesthetically about this bike and it blends in it's to me this was always a really cool bike i yeah, really like it head turner it's, it's definitely a head turner <laughs> and so I wanna go over the specs on this. They haven't changed a whole lot since last time, but it did get one pound lighter. Like I weighed it, I was like, wow, good job. And I don't know if the battery tell technology has gotten better or something that lithium ion cells, 48 volt pack, what is it, 12.5? Uh, yeah. Amp hour, it, it so it's is, roughly it 600 watt about, hours. Yeah, five, 595, I believe, yeah. Which is very, that's great. You know, that's been good for a while. We look at companies like Bosch, they have the Power Pack 500, and that's their like highest end one. So 600 watt hour battery, really nice to have that when you've got a 750 watt planetary geared hub motor. Hub motors are nice because they operate sort of separately from the pedal drivetrain. You don't have to worry about shifting gears and mashing and stuff the way that a mid-drive would, but at the same time, you're not as efficient as a mid-drive. So one of the really cool benefits is that Aerial Rider has a twist throttle on this bike. So in addition to pedal assist, which is torque activated, that's pretty neat. A lot of the other bikes I see, including some of the ones from Aerial Rider, they have like a cadence sensor and that just measures if you're turning the cranks or not. This one actually measures strain and it's this Dapu alloy encased strain gauge. Pretty neat technology. Why did you guys go with that for this bike and what do you think about that? Um, the thing is from day one, we always use torque sensors in most, almost all of our electric bikes. The reason is it feels more like you're riding a bike when you have the torque sensor because with the cadence sensor, it doesn't actually really feel like you're riding because it, it just measures the, um, you know, the rotation. But on this one, I like the feeling of um, still cycling, but it's more like you have superpowers. You just zoom. Right. Yeah. We looked at another bike yesterday. It was called the D class for dual motor. Very cool. It had a hub motor in the back and the front. And that one uses a cadence sensor. And I, I suppose, you know, where in this bike, you can see how the seat actually goes up and down and you can really optimize your, your legs and get that full pedal stroke. You didn't get that on the D-Class because it has like a banana seat. Yeah, it does. And also on the D-Class, the reason why we didn't put is there's another a safety reason because it has two motors and it accelerates really fast. Mm. So, um, and people are using that off-road. On the off-road, you know, you have to stand on the bike or what, whatnot. So it's not very safe to activate the motor with just torque or you put oh, on the pedal. That makes sense. So cadence makes more sense on that one. Thank you for the feedback. Like okay. that was the, yeah. you know, the different bike that I was talking about. All of this is pretty proven technology at this point. It's been around for a while. It's reliable. I like that they've they've just optimized the looks of this bike really well, all the way from like the black rims to the satin black frame, the black fenders, that black highlight on the saddle. Again, the branding, look at that, beautiful. On the side here, I really like their logo. And this does come in either red or kind of a tan khaki, is that right? Yeah, Arda? more like beige, I would say. Oh, a beige, yeah. Yeah. beige. How could I yeah. mistake because those lighter two? Than tan. Much lighter. <laughs> lighter than tan. But I like the brown accents a lot, and these are pretty comfortable grips. They're stitched, they're padded. Sometimes these grips are actually hard. They look soft. These ones are actually squishy, which I appreciate. And then, of course, safety is a big deal for me. So having integrated lights, you can see back here, we've got this Spinninga rear light. 
and I believe it's brake light activated. So if we turn the display on by pressing this power button, oh, you know what? I haven't turned the battery on yet, yet. Okay, so that's one of my gripes about this bike. Art is coming in to rescue me. That was that was purposeful, buddy. Uh, there are a couple trade-offs here. Because this top tube, down tube, is sort of taken up by the battery, they might have had room here, but there's no bottle cage bosses. I gripe about that frequently because I drink water at the same time this is a fun like round town neighborhood bike you're, you're probably not going on like a huge trekking adventure it's it's okay to pass it up and maybe you have a backpack with some water you could set up a rack or something but no rack bosses back here either oh my goodness no, we do have racks for this one on our website as well though we do tell have, me how they attach yeah. i want to hear about this they do attach to the seat post i've we seen have, that before yeah. the clamp right here no they don't clamp they clamp to the seat post not not to here to seat post and then they, they have legs which clamps clamps to this part to drop out they do have a support down there okay good yeah. Good. So there are always ways. There's a yeah, wheel, there's a way. Yeah, we do have rear racks for this model on our website. So it's not like you cannot put any rear rack. <laughs> well, and it's, you know, I'm, I got to beat the bike up a little bit on these these minor things because in so many ways you have improved the bike. There there are a couple other little gripes here. Pedal lock because that kickstand, it's not mounted back here, it's mounted in the middle, and that might be to support the weight of uh, the battery. I mentioned like some of the accessory mounting points, are, they're a bit limited, but they do, it sounds like they have that aftermarket solution. By the way, 27.2 millimeters on that seat post, you could swap it out for a suspension post, but this saddle is actually very comfortable and it's got some springs right here. And of course, the Springer fork up here, which is limited in terms of functionality. There's actually not a whole lot of travel going on. I think a lot of this is just style, but it is steel, so it's a little bit more vibration dampening. And frankly, I, I was surprised the weight of this bike is just 61.5 pounds to have this kind of a setup, have lights and everything. That's not too bad. And then of course we've got these fairly high volume tires here, the CST, and they've got that reflective sidewall stripe. So you're gonna be visible from the side and then that headlight. Okay, so I didn't quite get to my point earlier. To activate the bike, well, first of all, you charge it right here. It's a little charging port. I like that it's high up. You don't have to lean way down. If you're someone kind of back and neck sensitivity, it's nice to be able to just get to it. They give you this charger, standard two amp charger, a little toolkit, touch up paint, very nice. So that like the fork in particular, if you get scratches, you don't want them to rust. There's a little instruction manual. So let's say that the bike's all charged up. I'm estimating like five, five and a half hours for full capacity. Once it's ready to go, you have to leave the key in, you have to turn it to on. That's the first step. Then you have to press the power button here and it boots up fairly quickly. It's a backlit monochrome display, non-removable, and it's not in the center. It's, it's fairly reachable here, but we do have an adjustable angle stem, tool free. That's nice because look at these bars, look at this saddle. It's a very comfortable, relaxed cruiser ride. I like that a lot. The gears, you can shift those, very reachable. Got a little flick bell. But if you start going hardcore and you're, you're really going on the grass and off curbs and stuff, these stems can get a little bit loose. And so there is like a bolt under there and you just, you might want to touch that up if you notice that it's getting a little sloppy. You don't want to strip those teeth on the handlebar. Okay, so coming back to the display, very reachable. I'm going to go over the details of it in just a second, but first I'm going to activate those lights that we talked about. So I hold the plus button. There's a little light icon that shows up, the headlight. It's a Spinninga Swingo, and it's about 40 lux. It's not the world's brightest light, but it has a nice style that matches this bike. Bit of interference with these front cables. Not the end of the world, but again, that's that's one of the little trade-offs. And then the rear light, it's kind of a, it's got this cool like bright activation feature when you pull the brakes, which is really nice for a bike in this price range. So now I'm gonna start being very complimentary of the bike. Hydraulic disc brakes, 160 up front, 180 in the rear. It's nice to, I mean, these could have both been 160s. It's nice that they upgraded the back because that gives you a little bit more of a mechanical advantage and better cooling properties. The bike really isn't too heavy when you consider all the features and all the accessories and stuff, even the plastic chain cover. Nice pedals. So it is raining here just a little bit right now. And I'm not gonna have to worry so much about traction and slipping off. And these aren't gonna get as sharp or bent up as some of the like cage style pedals. And if I kick that fender, let's say I'm turning like this, and I have a pedal stroke where I bump into it, it's not gonna crack the fender because it's got that flexible uh, little, little mud guard. The wheels themselves, they're built really well. I think these are 14 gauge, but no, these are probably 13 in the front and 12 in the rear. I remember that, they're thicker in the rear. It provides more strength for that powerful motor. Okay, and then a seven speed drivetrain, 11 to 32 teeth with that larger 
uh, kind of a low gear for climbing, which could be useful if you're in Seattle and you're going up one of those hills, in addition to having a powerful motor. We've got a quick disconnect for that rear motor. We've got all the cables and stuff lined up here. And then Shimano Altus is like one step up from kind of entry level in the Shimano line. So coming back to value, I think the, the price point on this bike, is it $15.99? Yeah, it is $15.99. $15.99 is yeah. not bad because the first time I reviewed this, it was like $28.99 yeah. or something. Yeah, I mean, 23, I significantly yeah, $23.99. Yeah. Okay, still, that's a pretty big price drop. The technology has gotten cheaper in recent years. I think you've done a great job with this bike. And you know, I'm, I'm pointing out some of the trade-offs. There are always trade-offs that had to be made when you're trying to hit value and you're also trying to make something that's reliable. Yeah. Did it always have hydraulic disc brakes? Um, no, the first generation didn't have the hydraulic disc brakes, but after the first generation, we moved to a hydraulic disc brakes in all of our models. So we don't use uh, mechanical disc brakes uh, at all. Oh. And also what I really like about this bike is if you want something really robust, which is gonna send anything this is it because like everything inside is fixed it's not strapped it's, it's a great engineering it doesn't rattle so this bike actually does not make any noise even if you dropped it from a certain height let you're me not me. gonna throw the bike into the water are you <laughs> <laughs> it might not work if you do that <laughs> no i'll just show it this way like nothing rattles if you do this and this doesn't happen in that's not bad e what yeah. you're hearing is the chain, chain slapping yeah, a little bit on the top yeah right so i'm trying to build this up a little bit with you because i agree i mean this is really refined and some of the important things like brakes are done really well. The battery pack, one of the trade-offs of having one that's more permanently fixed on the bike like this, you can kind of open this up, but it's not designed to be taken out. It means that you have to bring the bike close enough to reach a power outlet. And if you live somewhere where it's extremely hot or cold, that can degrade the battery a little bit. So sometimes with a lot of your other models, you can take the battery off yeah. and take it inside. On this one, just keep that in mind. It is it is a fairly sizable bike and you just wanna take care of that battery. You guys have a pretty good warranty. It's a year on the battery, yeah. two years on the motor controller, and then also kind of a lifetime frame yes, setup. Is that right? Yeah, that is Okay, that's great. And you guys are a family company too. I mean, yes, it's like you are. and your brother or yeah, something. Yeah, so I'm more on the sales side and my brother is handling the um, production sites very successfully. And then my mom is also involved and she's doing our accounting and bookkeeping oh, and everything. Cool. So yeah, we are. <laughs> run by our family that's awesome yeah. and you've been going now for several years yeah I mean, that's, yeah that's i mean one of the one of the questions that we get most of the time is like oh how do i know you're gonna be here tomorrow and we're like we've been here seven years and we're not planning to go away it's not this is what we do you're making you know? a ton of more bikes in fact yeah, right exactly. you really yeah. expanded yeah. on this so that's a good overview you guys i've talked about all, all the different parts, but I'm gonna have a detailed write-up like I do with the length and the width and some of those other details. The, the shifter up here is kind of a bigger design. If you're wearing gloves, like I would like to be today because it's getting a little cold, it's, it's easy to use this. It's not like these tiny little trigger shifters down here. It's also easy to see what gear you're in. I like that, um, but it, it can be a little slower and you have to reach up there. So I've asked Arda, like, why do you use that one versus triggers? And he said, well, when you have the housing for the, the twist throttle and stuff, those, those ones don't really fit anymore. So this is something I've seen on a, most bikes actually that have a throttle. And I like how smooth and responsive that throttle can be and that you can use it in zero. Cause this, this bike has six levels of assist, but pedal assist level zero is kind of nice if you just want to have the lights on and use this like a scooter or something. So that the display just went off there. It has like a five minute timer. I'm just gonna do one more walk around real quick. So again, nice paint match stuff, pretty proven technology. We're gonna get a little bit of a ring sound from the motor because it is a, a geared hub motor, but it's gonna freewheel very efficiently. The kickstand, the placement has some trade-offs, but not bad. It's supporting the bike very well. And then that cool, you know, Springer fork with a quick release front wheel in case you need to put this in your car or, you know, move it around. They do sell predominantly online. And so you are gonna receive this and have to do a little bit of work yourself to get it dialed in. But in my experience, it's not too bad. And Arda actually visited me in Colorado once and we built one of these like <laughs> yeah. unboxed it and stuff. And it was pretty good. You can check out another review. Um, we for... also do have assembly videos online on YouTube as well. So it takes just 10, 15 minutes so they can just follow up those instructions. Uh, great, that's yeah. good stuff, man. Yeah. Thank you for that, that extra feedback. Uh, I just booted up the bike, so I wanna help you guys uh, just explore this. We've got speed and miles per hour. Assist level, it starts in three. That must be kind of the default, but you can press plus and go up to six or minus and go all the way down to zero, like I was talking about. And again, that throttle is hot, so be careful. I would recommend being maybe on the bike before you start to mess with 
the turning it on because if you bump that display, you know, it can kind of take off. And right now I'm just doing burnouts. Ah, that's kind of fun. Uh, <laughs> but the point being, it is a powerful motor, so be safe. Down here we have a battery infographic, so five ticks, roughly 20% increments, and then trip distance. But there's more to this display. If you press the power button, just tap it once, it goes to average speed, and then it goes to max speed, and then back to speed. And I think from trip to odometer. So there we go, and then timer, and then back to trip. So there's quite a bit, a bit here, and then if we hold the plus button, that's how you get the lights. I'm gonna do that again. And then the backlighting, you can't see it probably on video very well. And then I think if we hold minus, we get a walk mode, which could be useful if you did get a flat tire or if you were in a crowded park, maybe you had that rack option that we were talking about and you just didn't feel like riding the bike, walk mode is useful. And then there's all these cool settings in the display and you get to those by hitting tapping power twice quickly. So tap, tap. Okay, I'll try it again. There we go. So we can go from miles to kilometers if we want. So units, we can change the backlighting brightness. I'm gonna turn it all the way up to five. Oh yeah. And then power off. You can set how long until the display powers itself down. And wheel diameter, 26 inches. And voltage, 48, matches the battery. And then password. Password is kind of cool. Um, because it lets you kind of change the speed. So you might be someone who wants to go a little bit slower and yeah. be safer, or you could be a commuter and you could take this class one electric. Well, actually this is class two because it has a throttle. So class two electric bike, meaning 20 mile per hour max speed with the throttle. And you could turn it into class three where it would go up to maybe 28 miles per hour. You can keep up with traffic a little bit better, or maybe you want to use this on private property or something. There, there are a lot of different scenarios. So they do have that option as well. So I think that's it. Arda, do you feel like I missed anything before I hop on this? No, that's it, yeah. Do a little Go test ahead. ride? Enjoy yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna do that, buddy, I'm gonna do it. So we stow the kickstand and I'll just, I'll hop on this thing. I'm I'm doing pretty well. I think I have like a 30 inch inseam and I'm, I'm clear in the frame, but it only comes in this high step. Uh, you might have to hang your leg over if you're someone who's a little bit shorter, but with the throttle, you know, that helps you stabilize once you get moving. So I'm just gonna juice it, there we go. I can hear a little bit of uh, noise up there, but I think that's actually you know, the sticker tinking on the, the spokes. It is a very quiet bike and it feels fairly stable. I was uh, pedaling it without assist before, just trying to see like if my knees hit this box. And they, they, they touch it a little bit. Like I can kind of notice it if I'm really paying attention. For me, that's the biggest question mark on this bike is just, it does have a unique battery design and it's, it's beautiful and it's balanced, but it's also right there, you know? And it's not on the down tube, it's on the top tube. So the weight of the bike is a little bit higher. It feels very stable to me though. And now I'm gonna do assist. Take it up to six. And just trying to do no hands. Feeling pretty good. Even steering all right. I'm gonna do off-road, no hands. Oh boy, getting a little squirrely there. So, you know, with, with cruiser bikes, sometimes there's like frame flex and there's the extra weight and stuff. This bike has some of that, um, but it's not quite as noticeable as like a step through would be. The high step frames are a little bit more stiff. And then just the positioning, the bars right now are leaned a little bit more forward, so it's more aggressive. They could come up higher and I could be kind of upright, relaxed if I wanted to be. I'm gonna actually have Arda hop on this thing. Do you mind doing a little, yeah. little test ride for me and sure. showcasing it? How much do you weigh, buddy? 225. 225, yeah. and how tall are you? 5'11". Uh, 5'11", five five eleven? okay. Yeah. So he's gonna kind of leans it towards him, hops over the saddle, and that saddle could go a lot lower. Yeah, it, uh, it can, it can. I just like the upright sitting position, that's why. I and like the it. active pedaling. So yeah. back to this kind of, you know, moped almost experience where you could just use that throttle a little bit. People who, who are a little bit, maybe shorter, or just less stable, less familiar with the bike, if you lower the saddle all the way, you can kind of put your feet down and stabilize the bike a little bit. Yeah, yeah, and also one thing I want to add is that we have lots of um, older clients who are riding bikes and they have back problems. So 
this actual this uh, stem is very helpful so that they can actually bring it all the way up yeah. to themselves so that they don't need to lean forward. So this is a much comfortable ride for people with back problems. I like that. Yeah, I've always been a fan of bigger bars because they, they act almost like a suspension. They sort of dampen the vibration yeah, to your hands yeah, that is, and that your, is your arms, your back and neck. Like that yeah, yeah. stuff can start to... You can start to feel it. It cracks even like on sidewalks in some places. So go ahead, dude. Juice it. Right. He's switching some gears, pedaling along. I love the lights. You know, and for a bike that's roughly sixteen hundred bucks, it's it's pretty refined. Nice. <laughs> Having fun. Just a beautiful day here. I mean, even with a little bit of that rain, it's so fun to be in a special place. So for a bigger guy who's in excess of 200 pounds, it's, it goes pretty well. I mean, we're not on a big hill or anything here, but the 750 watt motor. Oh yeah. Very nice, man. Very nice. I really appreciate uh, the time that we've spent and getting to check out these bikes and do kind of an updated yeah, updated yeah. look. Is there anything in particular, aside from the hydraulic disc brakes that you, you dialed in compared to past years? Um, definitely, like the, um, for example, the uh, geometry of the handlebars changed so that you would have a better uh, sitting position. The saddle changed from the previous years of this model, so it's more um, cushiony and more comfortable, let's say. Okay. Um, and then the motor changed from 500 to 750. That's a big deal, yeah. yeah that's a, a big, deal. big jump up. Yeah, exactly. I and mean, these kind of small, these small details that have changed. So it, it's pretty fun to ride this one. It is. I like the bike for sure, man. And uh, as I said before, I've got more of the details and the minor specs and stuff back at electricbikereview.com. You can actually compare both bikes. There's a cool comparison tool. And I welcome your feedback. Maybe you have questions or you've bought from these guys before or tips or anything. Please chime in. We're trying to help each other here. I love you guys. Ride safe. We'll see you next time.